बिसमीम् अस्सलाम वालेकुम एवरीवन होप सो यू गाइस आर डूइंग वेल सो टुडे आई विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट द फ्रैक्चर्स ऑफ द अपर लिम्ब एंड आई विल बी कवरिंग द क्लेविकल एंड द शोल्डर जॉइंट द ह्यूमरस आई विल बी कवरिंग इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो सो डू वॉच दैट वीडियो एज वेल सो नाउ बेसिकली वट इज क्लेविकल सो बिफोर स्टार्टिंग Uh, to discuss about the um, the fractures of the clavicle let's study about the um, anatomy of the clavicle so it's actually a uh, also known as a beauty bone it's a s shaped sigmoid bone and see how this is the uh, convex part um, and it is uh, in front and it is in the anterior and this is the concave area and um see how this is i'm i'm marking this as lateral end and this as a medial end now in order to memorize it you guys can uh, memorize like that this is the broad area and this is a narrow area and um as you guys can see that this is smooth very smooth the superior view okay and this is the inferior view has some you know these tuberosities over here um landmarks over here you guys can see these structures so this means that this is an inferior part so you guys can you know make sure that which you can easily tell that which bone which side bone it, um, it is is it is is it of right or is it of left so this bone is of right so this medial end is going to uh, just see this diagram that this is a medial end getting fixed into the sternum so this is known as a sternal end and this lateral end is going to be uh, making a joint with this acromion of the scapula this is the acromion um clavicular joint so this lateral end is going to get fitted into this acromion um process of the scapula so this is the um basic structure of the clavicle so let's study about the fractures now so this is basically more common in males and um, mostly mid shaft of the bone is involved why mid shaft because um as you guys can see over here this is a clavicle this diagram and this is you know the mid shaft because the these two a uh, parts makes a junction over here and it is the weakest link um, of the entire bone so when this um you know um any trauma or any injury occurs this is damaged so mostly mid shaft of the bone is involved and if this lateral end is fractured then this acromio clavicular joint you know this is acromion this is a clavicle so this is going to get be getting be displaced so why does this actually this fracture even happen so um, if the person fall with the arm out onto hand see how this person is you know uh, falling um down and this see how when when this person is going to fall onto shoulder then this clavicle can get damaged and if someone just blow direct blow onto the shoulder like over here there is a hit then this clavicle can be damaged and just see on the right um side of the page that these um x uh, these clavicle there is on both of these clavicles there is a fracture over here on the center um mid shaft is being you know fractured here and here this x ray is showing this then now this fracture is um have to be treated so it can either be treated non operatively or operatively so if it is a closed fracture that not um much damage is done and it is not an open fracture then if it is closed fracture then you just have to um g g uh, you know the the limb is going to be rested in a broad arm sling this is the broad arm sling and the, it is going to be for 3 to 6 weeks this is a collar and cuff and this is a triangle sling so these are different sort of slings but we'll prefer broad arm sling over here um because you just have to make sure that you know this arm is resting properly so just you can choose uh, either of these then operative management is that if there is an open fracture okay remember if there is an open fracture now you have to uh, open it reduce it and then you have to fix it so now how this is going to be fixed 
um i'll be showing it in the next page so just remember open reduction and internal fixation very important mm, okay so now just see this diagram over here a 9 cm incision is made on the affected a clavicle see how all the structures are being pierced and then you are going to grab the um, clavicle reduce it okay you are going to reduce it you have reduced it um, then just see over here that there is a uh, clavicle plate with six locking screws so that you just uh, put this over here onto this uh, to support it so you are going to be internally fixing this okay i told you to remember this word internal fixation um so this is like you're opening it reducing it you are internally now fixing this plate over here so see how this um has been fixed onto the bo bone and just see after the operation you see post operatively it's been uh, seen on the um, x-ray see how you can see the plate with the six screws over here so this is how you you opened it you reduced it and you then just fixed it via a clavicle plate so now this next one is a shoulder joint so you should know the basics um, anatomy the bony structures uh, for the shoulder joint so see this is the clavicle and by the way this structure is you this view is like the posterior view which means that you are that there's a person and you are um, standing behind him and just seeing all the structures from there so this is the acromion process this is the head of the humerus being fitted in the glenoid fossa just do see this glenoid fossa how this is um, over here do remember this word glenoid fossa this is the head of humerus greater tuberosity lesser tuberosity this is a groove uh, a groove between the two tubercles is the intertubercular groove this is a humerus this is the scapula this is a coracoid process this is a scapular notch the, it's just a superficial uh, structures that i'm just explaining so now what happens to the shoulder joint so if there is a dislocation um, like if it's just someone just pulled it very you know it just abducted it um, this is the abduction like this is the arm and you just abduct it okay so if there is a, um, a very severe abduction it might lead to dislocation of the joint so it might be an anterior dislocation it might be a posterior dislocation so anterior dislocation see this this is a normal anatomy and just see this diagram anterior dislocation so this is the, the uh, this is the glenoid okay just remember i told you to remember this this is a glenoid and this is a coracoid process just see over here okay so this is in front of these two structures see in front of the glenoid below the coracoid process is the anterior dislocation but if it is behind the glenoid um, then it is a posterior dislocation and um, okay this whenever this dislocation occurs it might lead to the damage to the glenoid labrum so here i have shown this glenoid labrum it is a fibrocartilaginous structure over here supporting the head of the humerus so uh, it might also get damaged during the dislocation because it is very thin so it might get damaged so now how to treat this shoulder injury so always remember that this is going to be done uh, under sedation or under general anesthesia so number one method there are three methods so number one is kuchar's method in which you are going to remember the word tear t-e-a-r so traction see how you are just you know tra and there is a traction over here and you are going to externally rotate this over here, externally rotate this then see now you are going to uh, you externally rotated it now you are going to bring it uh, to the chest over here to the chest so this is adduction now putting this hand over here like onto the other shoulder this is the internal rotation and this is a kuchar's method then the second method is the hypocratic method and this is done see how the doctor the surgeon um, has placed his um, 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 foot on, uh, inside the axilla and just you know pulling or extending the uh, limb to just 
uh, make sure that the dislocation is corrected and the third method is the hanging arm or gravitational method see how this um, uh, person is uh, just comfortably sleeping and um, um, a weight has been you know placed uh, um, on his um, um, this arm and this weight is mostly of 5 to 7 kg weight and uh, it is done for 20 to 30 minutes and you are going to ask the patient not to grab this weight because it might uh, lead to the damage to the long head of the biceps so this is uh, done for the anterior dislocation so these were the three methods and um, the complications of shoulder dislocation that whenever this dislocation occur because lots of you know important structures are passing there's brachial plexus going over so axillary nerve palsy can occur and recurrent dislocations can also happen so thank you for listening and uh, do watch my next videos um, and if you um, understood my lecture then do share it do comment and support me jazakallah khair al